All right, so we have a little bit of background on Aristotle's philosophy in general now. What can we say at this point then about his aesthetic theory? Well, unfortunately, we probably can't say as much as we'd like because we don't have everything uh, that Aristotle ever wrote. We have references to all sorts of things that he worked on from, from ancient writers who, who had access to them, people like, like Cicero and uh, a number of older historians, a guy named Diogenes Laertes, people living in the second, third century, times like that, who still had access to this stuff. It seems to have disappeared now, so we don't, we don't know uh, all the different things that he wrote about. The one thing that we do have access to um, is a work called The Poetics. And The Poetics is specifically about tragedy, the role of tragedy. How is it that tragedy works? Uh, what is it that's created? Why is it that we endeavor to do it? And what we see from this, even though it is only in one particular area of art, it's not in art in general, or even the broad swath of art that, that Plato had, is that Aristotle has a much more positive view of the arts uh, and, the, and the role of the arts and aesthetic encounters with the world in general, and this largely comes out of his philosophy. How does that work? Well, let me explain a little. Uh, one of the things that, that comes up with Aristotle most often is this idea that uh, art is not simply a matter of, um, of replication, the way that Plato talks about it. Art has a certain degree of manufacturing that's involved on the part of the artist. Now, how does that, what's being manufactured exactly? Is it, is it simply a replica? Because Plato thought that there was a manufacturing of art. He just thought that the truth that was there was, came from, the, from a truth that the art didn't understand. That's not actually the case with Aristotle. You see, with Aristotle, what we have is a situation where art is enjoyable, certainly tragedy is enjoyable, because it leads us to something that's very natural inside of ourselves, what he would call the final cause of, uh, of human identity and that is understanding. If you ask what it is that moves the human being, what it is that we endeavor towards, what it is that we strive towards, what Aristotle will say is some degree of harmony and wholeness in being what we are. In the case of the organization of, of life, uh, in, if you've ever read his Nicomachean Ethics, this is eudaimonia, this is his sense of well-being, of it's translated as happiness often, but a sense of well-being, of ease, and everything's right in the world and balanced and pure. Well, as far as, as our, our engagement with the world, uh, conceptually, he would say that the final cause of human beings, the thing that moves us, brings our energies together, brings us forward and, and sort of shapes our aspirations in the world, is understanding coming to know, and not just understanding what something is, but being able to make generalizations about it. Not just being able to say, that's what that is, but you say, this is what this thing is, this is what it means, here's the context for it, here's the sense of it, here's why it's important. When we can do that, for Aristotle, we come to be more of ourselves. We come to realize the fullness of our own possibilities in ourselves. And this, he thinks, is what art aims to do. Art taps into this final cause inside of us, that, that not even inside of us, that's part of us, that, that's part of the organization of us. And by virtue of doing that, helps us realize ourselves. It's when art brings us to a state of understanding, uh, when it gives us insight into what we are, the way we act in the world, what things are, what meaning is, that we find it enjoyable. This is not, as Plato thought, just a matter of finding some sort of blind stimulation from something we don't understand. Quite on the contrary, we, we do understand it. We do have a deep sense of, of how these things are to work. Okay, so that brings us, I suppose, to an, another question then. If art is something that, that is, uh, leads us to the final cause, to sort of a rational realization in in ourselves, then how does it work? Well, again, it, it's likely that it works in quite different ways according to different arts, and unfortunately all we have with Aristotle is his work on tragedy. But, but what seems to be the case is this, is that 
the, the tragedian has laid out a pattern of human actions, a pattern that we know and can anticipate. We know something bad is going to happen. Um, but we understand this. And by virtue of understanding it, we can observe what this understanding is and have some sense of both participation and detachment at once. Participation in the sense that we recognize these qualities in ourselves. We recognize these themes. We understand some aspect of what is going on in relation to ourselves. But separation in the, in the sense that because we know it's going to happen, we aren't filled with dread or terror necessarily. Sometimes, I suppose, we might, we might become shaky, but there's a way in which the, the deepest sense of this is when we can step back for Aristotle and appreciate what's going on, not because it makes us feel good, not because it, it stimulates us or you know, gives us the willies, but because it helps us realize something that's beautiful and frail and, and at the same time noble in us being what we are conceptually. This is, this is what this aims towards, right? It's a, uh, the tragedy, in other words, clarifies our feelings by bringing all of these forces together, organizing them in a way we can understand, and then purging them forth, what he calls a catharsis. This is how tragedy works, and there's, I suppose, one last thing I would say about this, which is that not only is it the case that tragedy helps us come to understand, truly understand something about ourselves and our world, not only does it help us come to to realize and be what we are by realizing this final cause in ourselves, but one other thing that, that Aristotle's aesthetic theory stands in pretty sharp distinction to Plato's on this point is that it's only possible to do this, to, to make these, to make these uh, works of art, these tragedies, if the artist, in fact, does understand something about universals, right? does understand something about these principles. Now, keep in mind, these principles aren't exactly the same principles that Plato's talking about, and maybe part of, that's part of the reason that Aristotle has a little bit easier time uh, believing that artists do understand. But this is a big question, and it's a question that begins, as you can see, very early on. How much do artists understand about the work that they create? How responsible are they for the work that they create? And what is it that they would hope for or ought to hope for as far as us, the audience, the observer, the, um, the fan, I suppose? Uh, what is it that we should expect of for them or of them with regard to this? So these are some questions I would ask you guys um, who are taking this class with me about, about these ideas regarding Aristotle. Okay, well, talk to you later.